Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor, and today you will learn five phrases that we use in Russian. Phrases in Russian are something that we use illiterally, sorry, not illiterally, but figuratively, not in a literal meaning, okay? Figuratively, to mean something very precise and very specific. And typically, these phrases come from something, you know, back in the day when the meaning is somehow assumed or it's, it stands for something within that little phrase. What I've noticed that in English, we don't have these as much. We don't have them, we don't have that many of them. Or at least, it's not a common practice to use them in a daily dialogue. While these that I'm going to share with you today, a set of five for today, are some, it's something that, that we use a whole lot. And you can hear, let's say, these, the ones that I'm going to, uh, to, to share with you, maybe I hear one of them, maybe every other day. You know, it's pretty common to hear them in the conversation. All right, but if you guys want to learn something more real life vocabulary, something more basic, not this specific, not this kind of native stuff, then check out our 50 Russian Stories book to read about, you know, different situations in life and learn real life vocabulary. All right, but let's get to the phrases and know what they mean. First one is Medvezhya Usulga. And Medvezhya Usulga means a bear's favor. And it's that kind of favor when it does more damage than help. And it comes from this fairy tale where a bear wanted to save a plant by killing a fly on that plant, but by killing the fly, slapped on the, on the plant and killed the plant. So yes, he wanted to help, but he did more damage than help. All right? And a common sentence could be, on оказал нам He did a bear's favor to us. Second one is Pakazat где раки зимуют to show where the crayfish winters or where I'm not sure whether rak is that common in in the states I have never heard crayfish I think it's more like crab crab but, but it's it's a different animal at the same time so anyway crayfish winters but it doesn't make that much sense but literal sense but what it means is to to let somebody have it meaning to beat them up to show them what's what to put them in their place, all right? But it comes from the fact that back in the day, nobody knew where the, the, that crayfish winters. Nobody knew where, it's just like a secret place, nobody knew where it is, and thus it was kind of a scary place. So, by telling somebody, I'm gonna show you where they winter, I'm gonna show you something scary, I'm gonna do something scary to you that you're gonna fear from now on, okay? So it's like a threat to somebody that you're gonna punch them, you know, uh, fight them or whatever, or show them the hell, okay? Kind of like that, all right? Third one is beat bakuushe. And beat bakuushe means to be lazy, to be lazy to not do anything to be slack enough. Back in the day, bakuushe and to beat bakuushe was uh, kind of like an easy task to do in some sort of craft. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it was an easy task to do. And somebody who would just do that it's like you're doing the easiest work possible. You're not doing the real work, the grunt work. So you're being lazy, you're, being, you're slacking off. But now, these days, we use, it, we use it to say that somebody is not doing anything. For example, uh, when there's a lot of work in the house, somebody's playing the video games or watching movies or whatever, they're not doing the work that they were supposed to do. And the sentence can be, хватит бить бакуши. Enough of not doing anything, enough of chilling, get to work. Fourth one is ZASIMYU PICHATIMI, which means behind seven stamps, but in my understanding it means behind seven locks. When something is in such secret that is behind seven locks, that it's it's very it's a very you know private thing, it's a very it's, it's a very thing that you cannot really show to everybody, and it's something that's hidden uh, out of access. ZASIMYU PICHATIMI, okay, behind seven locks, for example. Мы храним наши документы за семью печатями. We store our documents behind seven locks. We keep it in such secret, we keep it in, in, in such hidden place that nobody can find it. And this fifth one is my personal favorite. And it goes, делить шкуру неубитого медведя, which means to split the skin of an unkilled bear. And it means to kind of plan to spend whatever you're going to make without even making it first. 
So like you're like, all right, in five years, I'm going to make a million dollars and I'm going to spend it on the yacht. I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to do all this. I promise you, I'm going to pay for your car. I promise you, I'm going to buy you an apartment. But you're not even there yet. You're not even, you didn't even get that million dollars. Maybe you promised that. Maybe you expect that. But you didn't get it yet. So why are you over here promising things? Why are you over here, you know, trying to flash it and trying to be cool with it before even making it, before even earning what you what you are planning to earn? Of course, nowadays it's used with, with money because that's kind of what we all do, is we're making money, we're planning to make money. But of course, back in the day, you know, when people were to go to hunt and, you know, uncut bear hunting, right? Uh, and they would split, um, kind of decide who gets which portion of of the bear before even killing it. Who told you that you're even going to catch one, you're even going to kill one? It's pretty hard to kill a bear. So who told you that that, that, that is going to be successful? Why are you over here trying to already, already decide who gets what before you've been doing the work for it? All right. So these were the five different phrases that we use on a daily basis, maybe on the, uh, every other daily basis, right, uh, in Russian. And for you to really be involved in Russian culture and Russian, you know, simple dialogue, you got to know these. All right. So I hope that you now can use them and I hope you can apply them in your conversation. But again, if you want to learn more real life vocabulary, like to eat, to drink, to go, whatever, then check out our 50 Russian Stories book to get the most out of the simple Russian situations that come come your way and it's right under me right now and it's the first link in the description or continue learning the great Russian language with this next video.